Welcome to Rocky Railway VBS Online. My name is Mike and I'm excited that you're tuning in this summer. Every Monday for the next five weeks, we're gonna explore how God is powerful and how we can trust Him in our lives. Now these videos are gonna be packed with music videos, a Bible adventure, demonstration of crafts that we had delivered to you, kid vid cinema, and more. But hey, let's start off with music. This first one here is our theme song called Your Power Will Pull Us Through. So everyone, let's get off the couch. Here we go, on your feet. Let's see if you can learn these words and motions. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. Trusting in you, you give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. We're off on this journey, there's no looking back. With Jesus to lead us, we're on the right track. Oh, oh. Spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. Imagine what it would be like to journey on a steam train through the wild, vast, beautiful Rocky Mountains. Now, a long time ago, trains were the fastest way to travel when you had to go far or up a big hill. Not many people ride steam trains like this anymore. Now, steam trains, they get their power from the steam engine. Now, imagine a steam engine is, is a lot like a tea kettle. See, whatever the water inside boils, it pushes through a hole and it whistles. Pretty cool, huh? Inventors figured out a way to capture steam and turn it into power. Enough power for a train to pull thousands and thousands of pounds over tall, rocky mountains. Now, trains have the power to cross miles and miles of deserts, carrying things to people who need them. Maybe whenever you think of power, you think of superheroes who have superpowers. Who are some of your favorite superheroes? Or maybe whenever you hear the word power, you think of someone who has huge muscles and is really strong. But God has more power than either of those. See, God actually has the power to create mountains and oceans just by speaking. See, God has the power to love and forgive and comfort and heal. 
And God is even more powerful than death. See, Jesus is God's very own son, and he has all that power too. So this week, we're going to be talking about how we can trust Jesus' power to help us every single day. And later this summer, you're going to hear about the life-saving power of Jesus' blood. Now, each week, we're going to learn a Bible point, an important truth from the Bible to remember. And today, we're going to explore how Jesus' power helps us do hard things. That's our Bible point. So, today, whenever you hear someone say, Jesus' power helps us do hard things, say this. Say, trust Jesus. All right, so let's try it out. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. So now we're going to try something more. So not only whenever you hear the Bible point, are you going to say, trust Jesus, but we're going to add emotion to it. So here we go. Whenever you hear the Bible point, you say, trust Jesus, pretend like that you're pulling a train whistle. So here we go. The train whistle goes, whoo, whoo. Well, we're going to say, trust Jesus. So here we go. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. All right. The Bible says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Christ is another name for Jesus. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. And he gives us the strength that we need to power through sadness or confusion or mad feelings. So let's sing a song about Jesus' awesome power. There's a spirit I cannot contain. There's a spirit I cannot contain. The same power that raised Jesus up from the grave. The same spirit I cannot contain. All week long, we'll get to know surprising Bible memory buddies who will help us remember our Bible points. Now, all of our buddies are animals who you can find somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. Let's take a look. Hey there, friends. Glad you're all on board for a rambunctious week of faith and fun at Rocky Railway. I'm Ramsey, a bighorn sheep. Um, can you guess why? <laughs> okay, that was too easy. Check out these cool, curvy horns God gave me. Ram's horns can weigh up to 30 pounds. That's as much as some of our littlest preschool buddies. Wow! My horns have to be tough, because we male sheep use them to keep other rams out of our territory. 
People who study rams say we can run into each other at 20 to 40 miles per hour. Bam! You can hear that sound for miles! Me and my herd hang out all over the majestic, massive Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains rock! If you head up to find me, strap on your hiking boots. Sometimes my herd grazes in an alpine meadow. Cause that's where the good stuff is! Wow, good! But the meadow makes us an easy target for predators, so we also like to climb way up those crazy cliffs. We sheep like it steep. Me and my family can hang out on a little teeny tiny ledge that's only a few inches wide. Animals like bears or coyotes can't bother us here. Whew! And check out the view! God made us just right for staying safe in those hard, rocky places. My hooves are split and have a rough skin on the bottom that grips tight to the rugged rocks. Plus, I've got excellent eyesight. No glasses for me. It may sound like climbing these cliffs and balancing on jagged ledges is hard to do, but God has given me everything I need to live here. Find food and keep my family safe. I've heard that you sometimes have to do hard things too. When there's a bully at school, maybe you feel like you're in a rough, rocky place. You may not be balanced on a cliff ledge like me, but maybe you have to balance homework, chores, sports, music, and friendships. That sounds hard. Hmm, maybe coming here today and making new friends even feels like a hard thing for you. But did you know you don't face those hard things alone? No way! Jesus is right beside you. Yep, even right now. He gives you his power to climb through those mountains of worry and get through any rough stuff you gotta do. The Bible powers you up with this truth. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That means you don't have to have your own power to do hard things. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. And wow, this is just the beginning. We have so much more in store today. But hey, let's continue discovering how Jesus' power pulls us through. Trust Jesus. Hi everyone, my name is Beth, and together we're gonna go on a Bible adventure. All summer long, we're gonna be exploring real stories from the Bible and discover how Jesus' power pulls us through. In my life, some things are easy for me to do and come naturally, and I feel really confident when I do them. But there's other things that are just hard for us to do. Jobs that are really big or super complicated. When we run into something like that, remember this. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Today, we're going to learn a story from the book of Acts, chapter 9. We're going to meet a man named Ananias, who was called by God to do a really hard thing. Ananias, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm hiding. From who? From everyone. Well, that's not really going to work. Why don't we talk about this? Oh, by the way, Ananias, this is everyone. Everyone, meet Ananias. Hello, friends. So why are you hiding again? There's a man named Saul, and he's here in Damascus, and he puts people in prison if you love Jesus. And I love Jesus. Oh, so I guess you... He puts all of Jesus' friends in jail, and he's here in Damascus. So I guess you haven't heard that... What? That one day Saul saw Jesus, and a bright light showed down on him, and then he heard Jesus' voice, and then he fell down, and then he became blind. And then all of his friends brought him to Damascus. Yeah, I heard about that. So why are you hiding? And what are you wearing on your head? It's a disguise. No, you blew my cover. That was my disguise. Well, I hate to break it to you, but it wasn't really working. Well, God this morning appeared to me in a vision, and he told me to go down to Straight Street and to see a man named Saul from Tarsus. Wow. And he even told me to put my hand on Saul and to pray for him to see again. So what are you doing here instead of doing what God asked you to do? Well, 
whenever I pray for Saul, he's going to be able to see again. And what's he going to see? He's going to see me and he's going to throw me in jail. And he throws big rocks like these at Christians and he puts, puts them in chains. And I'm super scared to do it. Have you ever had to do something that was super hard and you were scared to do it? You know what? I have. And so have my friends. We were actually just talking about it. Earlier, we were talking about things that were hard to do, like math, somersaults, maybe even standing up for yourself. But I'm wondering if there's something hard happening in your life right now at this very moment. Maybe you're worried about heading to a new school when school starts, or you've had a fight with one of your friends and wonder if you'll be friends again. Ananias, you know what God asked you to do. And I know it's hard, but you're not alone. We all go through these hard things. But remember, Jesus' power helps us do great things, great hard things, so you can do it. Are you feeling ready? I'm not so sure. Would it help if we prayed for you? Oh, yeah. Okay, everyone, let's pray for Ananias here. Let's fold our hands. Dear Lord, please give Ananias the courage to go out and do what you've asked him to do. Help him to remember that Jesus' power helps us do hard things all the time and that you are always with him. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, I'll see you later. Ananias, is that you? Hey, you're back already? How'd it go with Saul? It went, it went pretty good. I went to his house and he hadn't eaten in three days and he was super scary. So what did you do? Well, I prayed for him and I said, Brother Saul, my Lord has called on me and sent me to pray over you to give your sight back. And I put my hand on his shoulder and bam, these scaly things fell off of his eyes and he could suddenly see now. Wow, that sounds incredible. Mm -hmm. And then after he got baptized and he had some food to eat too. Wow, it sounds like God has some big plans for Saul. Mm -hmm. And with those big plans, Jesus has given us his power to help us do hard things. Wow, that's awesome. Gotta go. Bye, Ananias. Wow, what Ananias did was amazing. He followed what God told him to do. And you know, if you have friends that are going through a hard time, you can help them out just like we helped him out. So I'll see you next week for another fun story. Hi kids, I am so excited to be here with you during VBS. I want you to get your box out and on your paper, it's going to list what supplies you need for the craft today. We're on our first week, and so therefore, go under week one. And today, we're going to make a handprint similar to this one. So you're going to need to get out of your box the foam brush, the tile, the permanent marker, and your bottle of paint. So now that you've got all your supplies together, this is probably one of the most important things to do. Cover your workspace, because you do not want your workspace to get dirty. So I just cut open an old brown paper bag. And here's what we're going to do. All right. Today's story talks about Ananias and how he had some tough things to do. But God gives us the power and helps us to do hard things. So to help us remember the memory verse, we're going to first write it around the corners of our tile. So using your permanent marker and going to your sheet here, the yellow box, right under where it says Bible verse, we're going to write all the way around the outside of our tile. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And then you're going to want to write where you find that memory verse in case sometime you want to go and look it up in the Bible. Philippians 
413. So you can't make your writing too big or it's not going to fit. But that looks perfect to me. All right, next, this is the messy part. You're going to take your bottle of paint and put just a little dab of it inside a container that you can either throw away or wash later. You're going to need some water for your paintbrush. And I have a little bucket with water in it, but you probably can just go in the bathroom and wash your hands. You're going to go ahead and you're going to put some paint on your hand. And where the paint is, is going to make a nice handprint on the tile. So you want to make sure it's really covered. You might want to get a big brother or big sister to help you or maybe your mom or dad and get it nice and covered. Now my hand's extra big so it is going to cover more of the tile than yours is. But then you're just going to find the top and you're going to put your handprint. You can put it sideways, straight ahead, however you decide you want to do it. Kind of press down on your hands and your fingers to make sure you get a good print. And there we did it. Now mine's covered up part of my memory verse because my hand's too big. If you decide that you want the whole hand covered, you can just add a little paint in the middle. This is a great craft because not only does it give you a reminder of how powerful Jesus is and how powerful God is, but it's also a keepsake for your parents because it has your handprint on it. So wash your hand and remember that God gives us the power to do anything, even hard things, and he is not ever going to leave us. So don't fret. If you've got to do something hard, just say a quick prayer, and Jesus is going to help you get that done. So here is a copy of a handprint that a friend of mine made for me. Let's say you don't want to go all the way around the outside. After you put your handprint, you could actually write the verse on each of the fingers. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Now if you're going to do it this way, you want to wait for your handprint to dry. And then again, you always want to write down the memory versus address. Philippians 4.13. Now if you happen to make a mistake and you have some rubbing alcohol, you can always Take a little cloth, get a little bit wet with the rubbing alcohol, and it washes right off. Normally, permanent marker is pretty permanent, but in this case, you can take it off. All right, that's the craft for today. You've learned how Jesus' power helps us to do hard things and that God called Ananias to accept Saul, which was not easy. I want to introduce you to Kid Vid Cinema, where we will meet kids just like you and see how Jesus' power helps them. Here's Dominic, who loves karate, but has to take a karate test. Let's watch this together. My name is Dominic, and I'm almost 11 years old. Dominic lives with his mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa. He enjoys all kinds of hobbies, but one is his favorite. I like to build things. I also like karate a lot. I 
I love karate because I get to really express myself and I get to have fun. And I also get to build character and build physical strength. Learning karate is hard work. Dominic practices up to three times a week. Plus, he practices at home with his dad. The hardest thing about karate is definitely a lot of push-ups, leg lifts, sit-ups. Dominic knows that he needs to trust Jesus when things get hard. There was this board breaking thing and I saw all the other kids break it with their palm right here, right here. Boom. Just didn't work out for me. Dominic failed to break the board with his hand, but he didn't give up. He continued to train and he asked Jesus to help him. And I said, I'm going to break this board. It's an obstacle way, way and let me push through it and ha! I broke it. Another part of karate is taking tests to earn new belts. Each belt color represents a new level. Earning a new belt is hard. I was very discouraged on the first day because I was afraid I wasn't going to pass and that's what brought me down. The second day, I was feeling very, very discouraged, very, very, very sad. And I thought, I don't think I'm going to pass this and I didn't. I failed and I failed and I failed. Finally got to the last day that I could possibly test and I said, this isn't going to be like those last times. I am going to pass it. I said, you know what, Jesus, Jesus can help me get through this. I'm just gonna pray to him today. I am gonna pass the test tomorrow. And I did. In the Bible, in the book of Philippians, chapter four, verse 13, it says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. My three day test, it was really hard. And Jesus helped me through that. I was nervous for it. If you're going through hard things, I suggest that all you need to do is just trust in God and he'll help you. Pray to God and he can get you through anything. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Dominic loves karate even though it's hard. What's something in your life that you like to do even though it can be hard? Some parts of practicing aren't very fun, but Dominic knows that Jesus' power helps him to do hard things. Remember the Bible verse, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Wow. We've seen how Jesus is powerful and how he helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. Now, did you know that train crews have challenging jobs full of hard things? Every day they haul cargo, keeping passengers safe, fixing broken things, and making sure that trains arrive at their destinations on time. Now, I find a tricky train track challenge for us to try together. I wonder if it'll be easy or hard to do. So here's the challenge. There are three tracks on this piece of paper. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to pull the corners apart so that way we have three separate tracks. Are you guys ready? I mean, come on, tearing paper. It's not that hard, right? All right, so let's give it a go. Here we go. One, two, three, pull! Okay, wait, I thought this challenge was supposed to be easy, but actually it's harder than it looks. So what's something that you thought should be easy in your life, but turned out to be a pretty hard thing? You know, I thought that learning a new computer program would be easy, but it actually turned out to be hard. Or, I don't know, have you ever seen those shows like American Ninja Warrior? They make it look so easy, but whenever I go to the gym, never mind. But let's try this challenge again. Now this time, we're gonna try it with a track tearing tip because sometimes we need some help to do something challenging. So to help us get ready, let's together shout out our Bible point. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. So here's the track tearing tip, watch carefully. We're gonna put the middle part of the tracks in, your, in my mouth here and then I'm gonna pull on the ends. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Just like this. 
put the middle piece in into the center part. So on the count of three, I'm going to pull the ends and we're going to see what happened. Are you ready? So one, two, three. Whoa, look at that. We have three easy, clean tracks. See, sometimes you need help. You need people around you to help you. The way that I gave you a track tearing cut. But Jesus also has the power to put the right people into your life who can support you, guide you, and help you to do tough stuff. Wow, we have had a great week at Rocky Railway. So thanks for celebrating Jesus' power with me. And I cannot wait until next week for another day of adventure, discovery, and excitement with all of you. Thanks for joining us.